Hi, my name's Phil and I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the disaffection of the English and how this may have contributed to Brexit. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, then please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, when it comes to voting for Brexit, um, the UK is of course made up of four distinct countries. We're all three countries and a bit of a country in Northern Ireland. Uh, you've also got Scotland, England and Wales. And of course, when it comes to Brexit, we've seen recently the devolved Scottish Parliament voted very much against Brexit, as Scotland, a majority of Scotland voted against Brexit originally as well. So that position has been fairly consistent there. Northern Ireland, their assembly has voted against Brexit. And Northern Ireland itself, collectively, has voted against Brexit consistently as well. Wales did vote in favour of Brexit, but the Welsh Assembly has not. Uh, they've voted against it. And uh, people will argue as well that the people of Wales are now very much against Brexit. Well, so are the people of England uh, when we look at polls as well. And indeed, even when we look at the public polls of how people voted in the last general election. But the fingers keep getting pointed at England. Uh, part of it is natural enough in the two things. First of all, England has way, way more population than all the other parts put together. So, of course, the voting power in Westminster is way, way ahead. And secondly, that the Brexit campaign, which I remind you was very, very successful because polls indicated that there was no support for leaving the EU at all until that Brexit referendum. Even when the Brexit referendum was being discussed and when David Cameron was promising one, there was still not anything like a majority in favour of Brexit. The Brexit campaign was brilliant in that it perfectly timed it so that the proportion of the population that were in favour of it just slightly dipped above 50%, just in time for the referendum, after which it came back down again. And that campaign was very much targeted at England. And, and if you look at the nature of the campaign, it was very much about targeting the disaffection of the English. Now, it could be argued that the UK in general, uh, like a number of democracies, but certainly the UK in general, has been disaffected by politics. We do not believe, and, and I think with very good reason, that politicians have got our best interests at heart. The political establishment doesn't have our best interests at heart. We know that, but a lot of people, when they go traipsing off to the polls to vote for their MPs, a lot of people don't really believe that any party has their back, or at least any party that realistically can form power. And so you have this level of dis uh, you know, disaffection. Now, in Scotland, of course, you know, you can be disaffected with Westminster, but you may be on board with your own parliament. Scotland has its devolved parliament. Wales has a devolved assembly as well, and as does Northern Ireland. England does not. And there have been studies into this that have indicated that this potentially was also a factor in Brexit. There are numerous factors in Brexit. And because the result was so narrow in the end, even a very small factor, uh, potentially, if it wasn't there, would have very likely swung it the other way. Uh, obviously, bigger factors are things like the campaign itself, very successful. The fact that a lot of the parts of the British media were feeding this drip, drip, drip narrative against the EU for so many decades before as well, getting into the public consciousness was a big factor. The fact that many British politicians, by no means all, but many influential British politicians, have even those who are in favour of the EU, have found it expedient to blame the EU for their own failings. Um, knowing full well that there was no danger of us leaving the EU, so it seemed like a, an easy target for them, and that has backfired. That was also a major factor, we, because that meant you had no real counter to that drip, drip, drip negativity from the British media. But the concept of devolution, the, dis the, the disaffection sorry, of the English, is uh, a real possibility, because when you look at the situation... And I know people have expressed this view as well. When in my lifetime, the, the devolution of the UK has, has really taken hold. You know, the devolved Scottish Parliament was in my lifetime. Welsh Assembly at Stormont in my lifetime. And people in England 
looked at this and were going, well, what about us? Because the reason why Scotland got its own parliament and properly devolved, well, properly devolved, you could argue the fact that if it was properly devolved, it shouldn't have to take major constitutional change without being in favour of it itself. That's a failing in the system. But nonetheless, it has a devolved parliament in most respects. Wales has some devolution as well. Not as much as Scotland, should have more. But it has got a certain level of devolution. Northern Ireland, a certain level of devolution as well. And the reason for that is because it was always seen that Westminster was England's parliament. But it's not true. It's not. It's just, obviously, if there are going to be fracture lines along these national lines, England is going to hold sway. It has the bulk of the population and not just a little bit massive. It has virtually all of the population of the UK. So, of course, it has almost all of the seats as well. Uh, in fact, it's actually technically proportionally less. So England actually has slightly less proportionally of the seats compared to population. So, but anyway, it's not. It's the British Parliament. There is no English Parliament. And, and the English really, it could be argued, it's certainly been felt that there, there is no English identity anymore. Even in sport, like I always say, I just feel, my, feel think of myself as British. And I don't mean British first and then English second. No, there's no English second. It's Yorkshire second, if anything. There's no English. I don't feel English. The only time I am English is when I have to watch a sport where I have to be. And that's not my decision either. Say football or rugby, for example. Classic examples where we have teams along the, the national lines. Absolute madness. But we do. And, and Scotland and Wales have their own anthem. And a bit different because in rugby there's just the Irish team, which is actually a much better idea. And they... They created their own song, Ireland's Cork. It's an absolute Corker if you've never listened to it. And uh, that's not a pun, by the way, Corker. I just realised, sorry. Um, but what do the English team sing? God Save the Queen. What's the British anthem? Okay, yeah, all right. Lit written largely as an English one. But it's, it's the British anthem. The English should have their own, but they don't. So there's no level of identity that's particularly English. We don't have our own devolved parliaments. So we should. We probably should have several. One for the south of England, keep them away from the north. One for the north, one for the Midlands. Um, you know, but, but there should be devolved parliaments that's totally separate to Westminster and leave Westminster to deal with purely British matters. You know, international policy, that sort of thing. And, um, but we don't. So there isn't that level. So I, th I think in England, you had a greater level of cutoff. Scotland had... People that were speaking for them. Wales had people speaking for them. Northern Ireland people speaking for them. England didn't. There was no one. And, uh, and although some people point to the fact that there are purely English matters that are also decided, but they're decided in Westminster. And again, we need, you know, there's no separation from Westminster purely for England. So a lot of people in England just sort of felt that the political establishment wasn't, in their favour. I suppose it's a little bit like some men, and uh, and I'm not saying this is with good reason, by the way, but as feminism took hold, you know, some men felt, well, where, where is, because there are aspects of the law that that discriminate against men. And and there were some that were particularly, you know, you, the, like the campaign Fathers for Justice, for example, that fathers are sometimes treated very badly in divorce cases, for example, when it comes to the kids. And so some would then sort of say, well, you know, whenever there's uh, a situation that discriminates against women, people are all on top of it and not so much for men. There was maybe that sort of feeling as well for England, whether justified or not. I'm not saying it's justified, but it's there. At the end of the day, politics is all about perceptions. And when people started to see, well, Scotland's getting its own parliament, you know, and it gets to decide a lot of things purely for Scotland, separate to Westminster. Wales, a little bit the same. Northern Ireland, similar. Where, where, is it for, where is it for us? And so a lot of people voted potentially for Brexit. And I don't know whether this is a major thing. As I say, the studies in it have been limited. They've sort of suggested it was a factor. I haven't really seen uh, detailed enough studies to be able to say how large a factor, um, possibly because it's not considered as big a factor or it's not considered as you know, popular a factor. Um, but as I say, any factor, no matter how small, because the margin was so tight, could have actually swung it there. And perhaps if we'd have had proper devolution of the UK, 
which means more full devolution of Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, but also of England, and just had Westminster, just had that as purely the British Parliament, then quite possibly it would have been very different. So anyway, hopefully that adds another little dimension to the English problem of Brexit, which is, of course, yes, yeah, still continuing. I'm sorry for that. I really do apologise. Um, hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, then also please click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.